Over 17 years ago, Cadillac ushered in a new performance era when the brand introduced their first ever CTS-V. And back then it was essentially a regular CTS with a big Corvette small block shoehorned under the hood. And the beauty about the first model, it was, it was only available with a six-speed manual transmission. Now over the years, the CTS-V grew larger, it grew more powerful, it grew more luxurious, eventually ending production in 2019 with the third generation model, which sadly didn't offer a six-speed manual. So today I'm here at Virginia International Raceway with Cadillac to to drive the replacement vehicle for that original CTS-V. This is the 2022 CT5V Blackwing. And as you can see, just like the previous generation, you also have a 668 horsepower supercharged V8, but the beauty about it is it's offered again with a six-speed manual transmission. So if you guys are an enthusiast out there, been waiting for a super sports sedan with a V8 and a stick, was this new CT5V Blackwing worth the wait? Stay tuned to find out. So in case you guys are feeling a little confused, last year I tested the CT5V, which wasn't the replacement for the old CTS-V. This is now the replacement, and now you have to find a Blackwing badge on the back of the vehicle because this is the model that replaces that previous CTS-V. And the big difference, of course, between the CT5 regular V is this motor here. It's a hand-built 6.2 liter LT4 supercharged V8. This is, of course, built hand-assembled by an engineer at their Corvette manufacturing facility in Bowling, Bowling Green, Kentucky, and this motor makes about 28 more horsepower than the previous generation. Now we have 668 horsepower and 659 pound-feet of torque, so roughly 30 more horsepower and 30 more pound-feet of torque versus the old LT4 that was in the previous generation CTS-V. Now it all goes out through either a standard six-speed manual that comes, of course, with a limited slip differential. It has active rev matching and no lift shift. We'll be driving that later today. Or you can also get this model here, which has a 10-speed automatic transmission. The 10-speed is roughly $3,000 extra. It's got two more gears versus the previous eight speed in the CTS-V. This also only comes with rear wheel drive. It is available, of course, with launch control on both engines. Uh, and despite the fact that it isn't all wheel drive, Cadillac says you should get to 60 in around 3.4 seconds for the automatic and 3.6 seconds for the manual. So obviously this is a little bit slower than something like the M5 or the E63S, but Cadillac kind of wants you to compare it more to an M3. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Now, fuel economy, in case you're wondering, is rated to get around 13 in the city and 21 on the highway. 13 in the city is pretty terrible. Please be sure to run this on premium grade gas. And the beauty about the new CT5V Blackwing is even though it is much larger uh, than something like the CT4, it's not that much heavier. This one as it sits weighs in at around 4,100 pounds, which makes it among the lightest in the segment because it is an all-wheel drive. Now, shutting the hood and looking at the styling of this vehicle, the first thing I want you to notice, the hood here is slightly different versus the regular V, but it's mostly different for cosmetic reasons. They didn't really need to raise the hood to make clearance for the V8, but it also is missing the old heat extractor vents from the CTS-V. Cadillac says they didn't need to do that because of different vents uh, along the side. The front fascia, you can see, has a unique grille compared to the standard V-series model. It's got these nice little meshes in here that kind of resemble a V-shape that helps to accelerate the air into the intercooler and to the radiator. radiator. You as you guys know, a big V8 like this is going to need special cooling. The headlights, you can see this is their full LED headlight design with that art and science design theme. You have these LED vertical running lights, LED turn signals, LED low and high beams. And my tester here has around $9,000 worth of additional carbon fiber that does add some nice downforce to the vehicle when you guys are driving this out on the track. I also think it looks really good with this infrared tin coat. You can see the carbon fibers around the grill on the lower front splitter. This is an excellent looking vehicle. I think it's very handsome looking and Cadillac did a fantastic job with the styling. Now looking at the rest of the proportions, this is a mid-size sports sedan at 194.6 inches long. This is about the same length as something like a BMW M5 or an Acura TLX Type S, but this car is also an interesting tweener because it's priced in between an M3 and an M5, uh, even though it isn't. it has more, the power that really goes head to head with the M5 performance zero to 60 should be more along the M3. Now let's talk about the wheels because these wheels are interesting. Cadillac only offers the CT5V Blackwing with a 19 inch wheel. You cannot get a 20 inch wheel like you can on its com competitors. Cadillac chose a 19 because they wanted to preserve the ride quality. And also they said that the handling wasn't improved with a larger wheel and tire. This is actually the best wheel and tire that the engineers chose 
for performance. The brakes you can see are nearly 16 inches in diameter. This is the largest production brakes that you'll find on a Cadillac sedan. They are clamped by six piston Brembo calipers. And for the first time ever, you can spec in carbon ceramic brakes for $9,000. If you want this one here, it does not have that option. But you can see here, Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires are the high performance tire of choice. This is your only tire you can get. You've got two 75s in the front, fatter 305s in the back. So this is now 10 millimeters fatter versus the tire and wheel package that you got on the old CTS. Now looking at the rest of the side profile, my tester has a carbon fiber two package that gives you the carbon fiber on the rocker panels. The one thing I wish this car was available with was a carbon fiber roof and carbon fiber mirror caps. You can get black mirror caps for $200. I probably would do so, especially with this red color. But instead, Cadillac does offer a ultra wide view panoramic sunroof for $1,500. I would probably spec that option in but Cadillac says that they didn't need to do the carbon fiber roof because of the way the structure was designed. It wasn't going to actually strengthen it because the roof is kind of milled from just a single piece of steel where there's no separate cut lines. Now looking at this, the rear over here, you can see it's got more of a sport back design theme versus the CT4. And this is where the car looks a lot better than the CT4 wing V Blackwing that I drove yesterday. I do love this ducktail style spoiler. It's not quite as big on the CT4, so it doesn't give you quite as much downforce, but Cadillac says it wasn't necessary due to the sport back design. I also love the way the trunk lid is designed with these nice vertical LED running taillights. You can see the uh, carbon fiber package also gives you this carbon fiber rear splitter, which looks good. The quad outlet exhaust also is the whole part of the V-Series model. So let's go ahead and fire up this engine so you can hear what that nasty V8 sounds like. So you wanted a V8, well, Cadillac gave you a V8. wanted to scare small children with that exhaust and they certainly accomplished that. So typically if you guys want a V8, this is the model you want. It sounds fantastic. Now opening up the trunk capacity, you can see the trunk did get smaller versus the old CTS. Cadillac says it measures around 11.6 cubic feet. That is around three cubic feet smaller than the old model. I'm not entirely sure why it got so much smaller, but you can see the seats still fold down in a 60-40 manner. There are no hinges that crush your cargo. Instead, it kind of just eats into the space. And underneath here, there's no temporary spare, uh, just a little bit of storage and you get uh, a fix a flat kit. So on the outside, Cadillac obviously did a fantastic job with the CT5V Blackwing's styling. But what about the interior? Now, uh, this particular one that I'm showing you, the red exterior with this sky cool gray interior, these seats are part of a $5,000 option that also includes a power lumbar massage. They're heated and ventilated. They adjust in like 18 different ways. There's two person memory on the driver's side and they allow you to adjust the bolsters on the side and on the bottom cushion to really hold you in place during aggressive driving. I also think the seats look fantastic and this color combination is just perfect for me with the red and the sky cool gray, which is kind of more of like a whitish interior. Now looking at this interior at a glance, you can see the overall dash layout and design looks pretty similar to the last CT5 V that I drove. Remember, this is the black wing, so you get your own unique steering wheel uh, with this nice little red accent here. This is the upgraded performance wheel that actually mostly comes standard on the 5 V. Uh, it is optional on the 4 V, uh, but you can see the door panels. They look pretty nice. You have some real carbon fiber. I love the two-tone here with the red stitching and the white stitching over here uh, and the Alcantara when I shut the door. The door has a nice solid sounding thunk and you can see the new fully digital 12 inch display looks great along with the 10.25 inch display here with the Cadillac uh, infotainment system. Uh, here's the key fob for the vehicle. Unlike the V that I drove um, yesterday, uh, this key isn't red. So I'm surprised it's not red. I need to figure out if that's gonna be a thing or if this is an early pre-production model. The button to fire up the engine is where you'd expect it to be. You can see the gauges, very nice looking because they're fully digital. Um, my particular one that I'm showing you has the 10 speed automatic transmission um, with the paddle shifters, of course. And you can see this new steering wheel looks fantastic. It's a power tilt and telescoping wheel. It's a heated wheel as well. Uh, it feels really nice in your hands, very meaty, uh, nine and three grip of course and the one thing i wish it had was a flat bottom but you can see here with this performance steering steering wheel it shows you this little placard here uh on what production number yours is uh, along with the carbon fiber it makes the car feel a little bit more special which is definitely nice now let's talk about the materials in here because cadillac is quick to point out that their interior definitely feels luxury 
Um, but it's also not overly luxury. It's not overly flashy like some competitors, namely Mercedes. Um, I think this interior definitely looks good. Um, there's some decent materials in here, although this door panel stitching here, or lack of stitching on the upper panel, it's soft touch, which is nice. Stitching over here, it's hard touch plastic down here. Considering the six figure price tag of this particular one, I expected a little bit more leather on the door panel here. You can see there is nice leather all the way on the dashboard here. This is genuine leather with real stitching. I like the bigger display. I like the heads up display as well that you get on this particular model. And you can see Cadillac has completely redesigned the steering wheel where you have a separate V button here where you can quickly access your V driving modes. And you can also quickly access the performance traction management, which allows you to access the launch control and adjust the software to custom tailor to what or how aggressive you want the traction control to be. When you put this into V mode, it opens up a baffle in the exhaust and the engine, we'll talk about that later, sounds really good out on the road. Now over here on the center stack, you can see this is pretty similar to the last you know, CT4 V Blackwing that I drove, or the one that I drove yesterday, although the dash layout is slightly different with the larger displays. I love how they went back to the hard buttons here, of course, over the old CTS. You have heated and cooled seats, you have automatic parallel parking, it looks like as well, and you can see pushing that button, this is where you can access the full 360 camera, which is not available on the CT4 V Blackwing, at least the ones that I drove yesterday did not have that feature. So that's something to keep in mind. The resolution and graphic looks pretty good. This car does also have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Pair that, of course, with the wireless phone charging, and you can basically get away without having any wires in this vehicle, which is nice. The embedded GPS, you can see, uh, looks pretty good. This is been updated over the years. It's very quick and snappy, unlike the CTS. So this is definitely a huge upgrade, uh, which is great. The performance data recorder, this is now in its second generation. Uh, when you put, insert an SD card, which by the way, the SD card is right here, really easy to access. You can quickly take it out or put it back in. This now records in 1080p. It also functions as, as a dash cam. This is taken out of the new Corvette. It's about $1,600 extra. So highly recommend the performance data recorder if you want that built-in dash cam or if you plan to take this to the track often. Down here you can see this controls your 10-speed auto. It's that electronic shifter um, where I don't particularly love how it looks, uh, but it is nice how they do go with an electronic shifter. Your drive mode selector is over here if you want to cycle between uh, or once you get out of performance traction management, this actually controls the drive mode selector. So there you can see there's a sport, there's a touring, there's a track, and there's also a snow and ice, and then there's a my mode. So there's a lot of different ways you can customize this, which is important when you're looking at a vehicle like this. You can also customize it in the screen, which also looks pretty good. Down here, if you don't want to use the touch screen, you can, can use this controller right here. There's a dedicated volume knob, which is nice. You don't have to deal with that touch slider in the CTS. And you can see nice padded armrest right here. You have a nice center console storage um, with two USB ports in there, another SD card for your GPS. And then you can see here these seats. Love the way they look. They have the racing harness insert right there. And you can see you can adjust this bolster, you can adjust this bolster. So that's all very nice. And if you don't like this sky cool gray, they also offer a black and a brown interior, which is definitely a great option. Opening up the glove box, you can see it's a bin style. It's pretty big, damped, lined with felt, and then the CT4 or 4V didn't offer the rear view mirror that was digital. This does. You can see it's a really nice addition and the suede Alcantara headliner is good. You have LED lighting in the cabin and if you want, you can also get an ultra view panoramic style sunroof in this model, but just a regular sunroof in the CT4 V Blackwing. So overall the interior is definitely an upgrade. It feels a little bit more spacious in here. There's a little bit more tech obviously than the four. Um, but this is, this is where this car is interesting to classify because it definitely feels roomier in here than an M5 or an M4, an M3, um, but size-wise it's more like an M5, but I do think the E63 and the M5 do feel a little bit larger on the inside. So unlike the smaller CT4 V Blackwing, the 5 is definitely gonna give you the space that you need to convince your spouse that this is the perfect family car. This car is around eight inches longer, and you definitely see that in the legroom here. I'm five foot seven, and Cadillac says you get around 37.6 inches of legroom back here. 37.6 is more than what you find in the M3, uh, and about the same as what you're gonna find in the M5. So you've got a lot more space. You can see this particular one here has the carbon fiber seat backs with these, you know, Recaro bucket style racing seats. It looks fantastic. It definitely makes this car look pretty upscale back here. And in terms of features, you can see you have that same two-tone look to the interior. You do have these rear seat air vents. You got one USB-C charging port. The materials back here are pretty much the same as what you'd find in the front seats. Although if you're looking for heated rear seats, that is not available. Um, but you do have this nice little armrest that folds down, gives you two cup holders. So obviously if you need a usable back seat, or at least a back seat to accommodate your taller friends and family, you're gonna wanna look at the CT5.
All right, so to kick things off with the most powerful production Cadillac sedan ever, we are in the CT5V Blackwing equipped with the 10-speed automatic transmission. Yes, I know, I will show you guys a driving scene of the manual as well, but first we're in the 10-speed auto. This is probably the one that we'll be selling more of, even though we would like to save the manuals. Cadillac also says this car should get to 60 in around 3.4 seconds. So let's go ahead and try out the launch control of this vehicle. I'm a little nervous, but we've got 662 horse or 668 horsepower, rear wheel drive, 10 speed auto. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, I definitely felt a little bit of a queasiness in my stomach because I was afraid that I always get terrified every time I launch a powerful rear wheel drive car for the first time. <laughs> and this car just did zero to 60 in 3.66 seconds, which is 0.2 seconds slower than Cadillac's claim. We'll try another run later on, but uh, for a car that's only rear wheel drive that has this much power, it puts the power down way better than any of the Hellcat the Hellcat Chargers that I've driven. Even the Red Eye with their wide body tires or whatever, their fatter tires. Remember, we've got 305s in the back. They're 10 millimeters wider versus the previous generation CTS-V. This definitely puts the power down a little bit better than the last CTS-V that I drove. <laughs> it's just a ridiculous amount of power. I mean, I drove the CT4V Blackwing yesterday and this is definitely stepping it up. The two cars obviously come from the same you know, parent company, but they have kind of different feels. I mean, they both feel very track capable, but this <laughs> is something that's gonna put some hair on your chest. It's kind of scary, but in a good way. It's not, it actually, it put the power down better than I thought. Now, as we drive through uh, this little town here, I'm noticing one thing, a few things. First of all, this car is very docile when you're not getting on the throttle. It actually rides really well. This car has the Magno Rheological dampers, uh, GM, of course, is very good at tuning their suspension, and there's a reason why they only went with a 19-inch wheel on this car. It rides extremely well, even in this hard mode that it's in. Like, I have the PTM in its hardest, most aggressive, aggressive setting. Uh, the other thing that Cadillac also worked hard on uh, is the, the sound of this engine. This 6.2-liter V8 sounds really good. It makes some nice crackles and pops from the exhaust. It's got an active exhaust system. And this 10-speed auto uh, definitely deserves your consideration. It's not quite as quick as the fastest dual-clutch transmissions that I've driven, but it gets the job done and it upshifts so quickly. Let's go ahead and try these downshifts. The rev matching on the downshifts could be faster, but you can hear the burbles and the pops. Ooh. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> Very nice. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely a small block Chevy sounding V8. That is fantastic. Now, some of you may be wondering, why didn't Cadillac use the Blackwing engine that was from the CT6V? I'm sad to say I never had a chance to drive that engine, but this small block is certainly, or this 6.2 LT4 is basically the, a derivative of the Corvette ZR1's engine, and I don't hate this engine. So you want a V8, you got a V8, and the fact that they offer it with a manual transmission now is just something to be celebrated. <laughs> so much torque, so much responsiveness from it. Oh. Woohoo! Oh. <laughs> the upshifts are fantastic. It's just the, the downshifts, I want them to be a little quicker, a smidge quicker, I'd be happy. Try the launch control one more time, shall we? Point seven seconds there. So I'm sure on a prepped surface and with a little bit more time, I'm gonna retest this obviously when I have this car back at my home area um, and see if I can get closer to that 3.4, but that's very consistent at least and the sound this thing makes is phenomenal. So very little complaints with the way this car drives and the way it accelerates so far. 
But I definitely want to get my hands on the manual transmission because the manual, let's be honest here, that's the one that, uh, as an enthusiast, Cadillac built that to appeal to enthusiasts as the final hurrah to their final V-series Blackwing models that are going to be powered by internal combustion engines because as you guys know, they are going electrification for the next generation. So in today's world, it is very, very, very hard to find a V8 performance vehicle with a manual transmission. I mean, you really, really cannot find one unless you're talking like a two-door muscle car, like a Mustang, like a Camaro, like a Challenger. But Cadillac is the only one in the segment with a six-speed four-door sedan, super sedan, of course, with a supercharged V8. So now we have switched over into the manual model. It is painted in this beautiful shade of electric blue. Bless you Cadillac for offering a manual and offering it with bright colors like this. This is exactly how I would choose it. I'm not entirely sure I would choose this brown interior. It's this like caramel macchiato interior. I might go for the sky cool gray interior, but you gotta applaud Cadillac for doing that. I mean, I love these gray seat, or these brown seat belts that they also offer. and. With the manual transmission, you get features like active rev matching. So I'm in third now. I go to second, it rev matches for me. Go to first, it rev matches for me, which is nice. Woo -hoo -hoo! Oh, ho -ho 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 -ho. <laughs> and just like the automatic, it puts the power down pretty well. Uh, and we're gonna try the launch control at some point. Oh. <laughs> And we'll also try the no lift shift because that should improve your zero to 60 performance. Now remember the manual will do it in 3.6 seconds, which is what I got in the automatic. Well, the automatic is supposed to do it in 3.4 seconds. So we'll try that out obviously, but the manual, I will say the clutch is a little bit heavier than what I'd like. I drove the CT4 V Blackwing yesterday. It had a much easier clutch. that was a little bit lighter. The throws though from this Tremec are really good. They're nice and short. Um, lots of feedback, lots of visceral feeling that you get. And just listen to that exhaust. Cadillac said they wanted this to scare children and it definitely sounds really, really good. Very, very impressed. So let's go ahead and try the launch control. So vehicle must be stopped. Oops, ready, accelerate to start. All right, I just got 3.7 seconds zero to 60, which is around 0.1 seconds slower than the, uh, than what Cadillac claims. <laughs> it just puts the power down so well. I actually almost missed third there. So <laughs> it doesn't like being hurried into third, but oh my God, what a rush, what a rush. And yes, this is slower than a BMW, uh, M5, obviously, or an E63S, that one will do, I just tested that one a couple months ago, and that will do it in 2.9 seconds easily. If this car was all-wheel drive, you could launch it much harder, and it would give you that faster 0 to 60 time, but that's not the point that Cadillac was making with this car. They wanted it to be rear-wheel drive because they wanted it to give you that, that slidey around that like that wagging of your tail you're just not going to get that of course with all-wheel drive although you can technically with those newer ones that allow you to disconnect everything but the chassis of this car being built off the alpha platform is just phenomenal it is just like the automatic gives you an amazing ride quality even with the suspension in the harshest setting the exhaust and the response of this supercharged v8 is just perfect i mean this is as good as it gets it, when it comes to gas engines, obviously, you're not gonna get much better unless you go electrification, obviously. But let's try again, just cause we can. <laughs> again, 3.7 seconds, just like that. So easy and it's so controllable. Like, how is this thing not producing that much wheel spin? Their performance traction management system really is special. I mean, it's just a software tuning thing and it's just, it puts the power down so well. Not, I wouldn't say not like an all wheel drive car, but a very controlled rear wheel drive car that you just don't expect it to handle this well, to put the power down this good. And then listen to that noise. Oh, <laughs> definitely sounds like a four door Corvette. Still, I mean, this is this the LT4, the same motor that's in out of the old ZR1. <laughs> God bless you, Cadillac. <laughs> Remember, this car starts at eighty-four thousand dollars. Oh my God, the manual on the street, the way to go for sure, the way to go. On the track, I'm probably going to prefer the automatic, but as far as manuals go, 
for modern ones, this one with the no lift shift, the active rev matching. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. I cannot get enough of this. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, if you guys want a stick with a V8, this is the only game in town. So pick one of these up while you can. They're still available. Cadillac sold out of the launch, the 250 launch models that they offered initially, but you can still pick one of these up. God, I'm in awe. Like I can't decide if I like this or the CT4 V back Blackwing more. There's definitely something about a V8 that really speaks to me. However, it's not that much faster than the V6 powered AT or CT4 V because of just the traction issues. I mean, it puts the power down well, but you can't do hard launches without the all wheel drive. Could this car use all wheel drive? Probably to get the quickest acceleration times, but that wasn't Cadillac's point and you have to remember that. All right, so we're out here at VIR in the CT5 V Blackwing with the manual transmission. First time out on the track, I was out here yesterday in the four, but now I'm out here in the five, which has 200 more horsepower. Um, and I'm terrified. Hopefully I don't crash this thing, but I do have a little experience on this track from yesterday. Now Cadillac told me yesterday that the CT4V Blackwing was the most track capable car that they've built. But they also said the same thing about the five. Now I wanna re reiterate here that I am not a track driver. This is not my area of expertise. I am probably a novice, maybe slight intermediate. And I'm gonna take it easy on these first couple of runs because I need to feel out how the car handles these curves, how it handles or where the limits are with the brakes, with the chassis, with the suspension. And I have the car in its V mode and everything's pretty much in track mode right now that's custom set in the V mode. Ooh, that sound. Oh my God, so much more power than the AT or the CT4 V Blackwing. The beauty thing about this car though is that it still has plenty of grip from the chassis and the tires. These Michelins are fantastic out here. Oh my God, really good. The rev matching is nice. The shifter is also really great. Oh, there's that no lift shift. This thing pulls. Wow. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> now I'd still probably prefer an automatic on the track because the manual just adds another element that you have to shift. Which for you purists out there, you're gonna want the stick obviously, but track driving, I much prefer to focus on my driving as opposed to shifting. But this is a great transmission though, it's wonderful. It, great gearing also. And the noise this car makes, oh, the noise is so good. So even though the majority of people who buy this car probably won't ever track their CT5 V Blackwing, the, the, just knowing that you can do it right off the factory floor is just make this thing really special. <laughs> so with the industry continuing to head toward electrification and self-driving, it is incredibly refreshing to see Cadillac introducing a supercharged V8 powered super sedan with a six speed manual transmission. Obviously this is a vehicle that's going to cry out to the enthusiast. If you are in a diehard manual transmission V8 enthusiast, this car speaks to you. And it's one of the reasons why Cadillac decided to build it because the next generation of V series Blackwing models will be going electric. So this is really a final hurrah to the internal combustion engine. And Cadillac, as you guys saw, has built something that is truly the most track capable and most performance oriented super sedan they've ever built. Nearly 670 horsepower 
horsepower, despite the fact, it, the fact that it's not all-wheel drive, it puts the power down surprisingly well. The automatic transmission, even though I prefer the manual transmission out on the street, is probably the option that you'd want to go with on the track if you guys actually plan to regularly track this car. And really where I have my issue with the CT5V Blackwing is in the name. The name definitely confuses a lot of people, but once you kind of get past the old CTSV and understand that Blackwing is now the top of the food chain in terms of Cadillac's trim hierarchy, it's pretty easy to understand where this model fits in the lineup. Really, if you're trying to compare it to an M3 and an M5 or a C63 and an E63, that's where your head's going to start to spin because this car is priced very interestingly right between those two models. At a starting price of $83,990 for the base manual transmission model, this car already comes pretty well equipped. If you guys want the automatic, it's around $3,000 extra to go with the automatic, which also includes the driver assistance package that includes things like adaptive cruise control and lane keeping assist. Now my tester here uh, is $1,200 extra for the color, it's an automatic model. It's got $9,000 extra worth of carbon fiber. The seats are actually $7,000 extra. I mixed up the pricing between the four and the five. The seats are more expensive than this model. Add in all of the extras that this one has, and you're looking at an as tested price of just under $109,000. So $110,000 makes this vehicle pretty spendy. I mean, six figures for a Cadillac sedan obviously might scare a lot of, a lot of people out there. But when you look at what this car offers, over 660 horsepower, available manual transmission, zero to 60 in the mid threes. This is something that's going to become a collector's item in the future, and it's really the best of the breed in terms of internal combustion engines with a V8 powertrain. Well, all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2022 Cadillac CT5V Blackwing. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.